Hey guys, thanks for clicking on the video. I'm going to share with you my five top tips on how to get a first in that essay. Roll the clip. Number one, make sure that you have a very good structure, not just to the essay, but also to your approach to writing the essay. So for example, when I write my essays, I always have a separate a notes document. Almost every essay that you write will have to have a good structure. It will need an introduction, a main text and a conclusion. In the introduction you will want to define the key terms that are in the essay question such as Huntington's disease and then, and then outline what your argument in the rest of the essay is going to be. So for example I'm going to outline the ethics involved in the treatment and the research that goes into studying Huntington's disease. If I'm writing an essay on congenital malformations, I may say that in this essay I'm going to discuss the genetic and environmental factors that can lead to congenital malformations. The main body is where you will discuss the evidence that you've read and researched online by reading articles and put that into your story. And finally, the conclusion is where you come to a summary and a verdict on what your essay has been discussing the whole way through. So for example, if I've been talking about probiotics and uh, in my essay I come to the conclusion that there needs to be more funding into probiotics because it's a promising treatment for Crohn's disease, that would form the conclusion. So tip number two is make sure you're reading lots of primary literature. If you want to get that first class mark, you need to be reading really recent literature, even clinical trials that are ongoing at the moment and discussing this in your essay. This is the real difference between two ones and first classes. It's okay to have some old references, for example, when something was discovered. So when you start reading around your topic area, it can be quite good to go to a review paper. For example, a review on Huntington's disease. This will be a really good way to get a, a clear understanding of the topic area and it will outline recent articles if you go down to the reference section. However, you will need to look on however you will need to look on um, internet websites like PubMed or Google Scholar depending on what you prefer. A quick side note is that if you access PubMed or Google Scholar inside your university library, you will get access to all the subscriptions that the university has paid for, and this can save you some serious money. Or for the more uh, you dodgy lot out there, there is online torrent websites such as um, Sci-Hub, I think, um, that you can use to access these things for free. Once you've started to uh, identify studies that will be useful in your uh, in your main text it is important to write these down in your in, uh, in your notes so, uh, in your own words so that you avoid plagiarism if you make them into your own words then it avoids plagiarism altogether and you won't worry about it when you submit it into Turnitin tip number three diagrams this is vital especially in essays where you have word limits such as 3000 or 2000 word essays it's really useful to use a diagram to convey a lot of information by using very few words however a common mistake is to put a diagram into your essay without actually discussing it in the main text you have to discuss it in the main text for it to be encompassed in part of your discussion I love figures, I use them in almost every essay I've ever done and in exam essays. A couple of examples that you could use uh, figures to help explain is for example the RAS, RAF, MAPK molecular pathways or the pathogenesis for Huntington's disease or the malaria life cycle if you're talking about protozoa. Number four, references. I see this all the time from my fellow students is that a lot of you forget to check all of your references. Often you'll be using an online website such as RefWorks or Cite, uh, Cite Me Write um, or EndNote 
and you don't check do that final check once you import it and there's a few references that are wrong and this brings you down from the first class to the 2-1. So make sure you just double check over your references. It's really, really simple, but will really improve your marks in the long run. Also remember to use the correct ref referencing system for your university and that specific uh, piece of coursework or um, this way, at my university, we always used Harvard referencing. Um, however, some universities will say to use Vancouver referencing depending on their preference. Um, and, some, and some pieces of coursework will prefer Vancouver referencing because it takes up less space. Number five, craft a story. When you're writing an essay, you are writing a story. The nicer the story flows, the nicer it will feel for the examiner when they're reading through it. This can make a real big difference. Now, part of creating a story in a scientific essay is the discussion and the critical analysis. So when I talk about studies, I make sure I comment on the validity of the studies. So for example, if the study was conducted on only 20 people, that's a very small number of people to make a large generalization about. So you can say that it shows promise, but you, you'd need to further research in order to um, know that this claim would be generalizable. Or if it's a study that identifies proteins that could be possible vaccine targets, for example, you'd then comment that we don't know whether this actually would work as a vaccine target, um, and therefore there would need to be follow-up lab studies where they look at the fluorescence inside of protozoa to uh, see whether it stops the transmission cycle and therefore stop the disease. A couple of extra tips that I would give you guys is that in my essays I always try to use subheadings this way it helps the read or guides the reader through the essay and it's a little bit easier on the eyes, just like Adam Figures um, helps break up the text, so does subheadings. Everyone has their own essay writing style. As you go through university, you'll develop your own. Don't be, a f don't be scared if you're in your first year at university and you're, and you're writing your first essay and you feel a bit lost. It's absolutely fine. Everyone does when they're doing their first essay. In fact, you might even be doing your second essay and still feeling lost. It takes time and don't forget to use your peers and the other students out there to give you a bit of help and advice if you need it. And also, you can go to the library and use the resources there. There'll always be someone that can help you with your uh, English language or just your general essay writing skills. So I'm ahead off now. Thanks for watching this video. Comment down below what essays you're currently writing and whether this uh, was useful for you. Subscribe if you want more content that's going to help you get that first class mark. Don't be afraid to push that subscribe button if you want to follow, want more content on how to get a first class mark in your degree or you're interested on what it's like to work in the NHS or how to go from biomed to medicine. Thanks for watching guys. Ciao till next time.